Number one challenge right, is readability. It is so hard to read, for God's sake. Embed everything one super long line. Inside got so many if, you know, and so many open bracket. I also hardly can see how many times you close the bracket. Very hard to trace. And that's number one. Number two, I also kind of like, I dislike people who write formulas without proper spacing. They crumple and they squeeze everything into one super long line without spaces some more. When I say spaces means uh, they don't even do something like, for example, one plus one. They do this. Everything, you know, then multiply 12, divide 34, uh, multiply again. One. It's so hard to read. Okay. Is it going to be that difficult for you to do this? Is it easier to read where you know the operators and you separate the operators from the operands? So at least the, the, the mathematical operators is here and you've got spaces in between. I can differentiate. It's so much easier, so much cleaner all right, to read this. Okay, The operands together with the operators. All right. So I'm not saying that this is wrong. You know, It works. Okay, It will work as well, even though you don't have a space in between. No problem. It will still work. It's just that... Mm, uh, readability wise, you know, um, I'm sure if you show this to one of your colleague or whoever, the first thing you get is, you know, a frown first before, you know, people look at the formula. Okay. So good practice. Yeah. Make it readable. So in terms of readability, now I'm going to show you something here. I want to change the name of this measure to hello var. From here, I'm going to introduce, I'm sure, you know, I'm going to talk about variables. Index formula. It's just like a programming language. You need to understand the usage of variables. Not so sure about the standard Excel formulas, but in DEX, this is an integral part of formula writing index, VAR. Now, let me show you what you can do with VAR. Now, of course, okay, I can type like this, VAR. You see, look at the color. It is a keyword, X equals to, let's say, 5. I declare a variable. That means I declared a variable, x equals to 5. And I can var again, y equals to 6. Okay? Then I return x multiplied by y. Look at that. When I type x, the suggestion, the auto, the IntelliSense will show me this icon. This proves that it's a variable. It is recognized. Your variable name x is recognized here, x. Then multiply by y. Similarly, y is also recognized. So that means your variable is correct. You see? And this is something that I hated, okay, to read, okay? So what do you, what do you, what do you mean by this? Usually, I write like this, shift enter. Shift enter here. Shift enter. This is much more readable to me. I don't know, maybe I'm technical. I'm a developer by nature. I'm a programmer by nature. I train programming languages. I love to see multiple lines and blocked. Of course, you can start from the site. Okay. I usually choose to indent it. Indent. Indent. Again, for readability purposes. Remember, all these things I'm showing you, right? It's only for readability. Whether you agree with me or not, you would not want to accept this. You still prefer to write everything in one line. It's up to you, guys. It's up to you. It will still work. Technically speaking, it works whichever way you like. For me, I like this way, okay? You see, presentation-wise, also you can read carefully. I declare var x takes the figure five, var y takes the figure six. After one or more vars, you can declare as many vars as possible. Then you must do a return. What you like to calculate is return statement. Return means what I intend to output. Return, return to you, return to the output. I take X, multiply by Y. So when I press enter here, it's now confirmed. Again, there's no answer. When I drag hello var here, you can see it's a chart, but I change to a card 30. That's correct. You see? Five, six, five times six, 30. Okay. And if I change the variable from, let's say, X, five to 50, 
enter and becomes 300. 6266 enter becomes 3300. Look at that. Okay. So it's a simple notation. Okay. Just need to understand, okay, that the formula, okay, can be in this manner. But what if I go and rewrite them into the one very long line? Okay. Make sure you have a space. You, you don't do it this way. Okay. Make sure you have a space. Okay. What about this? Will it still work? Enter. Of course it still works. See, the answer is still here. Okay. So 12, uh, 34. And multiply, enter, still works, 408. So one long line, no problem. Multiple lines, still okay. All right. Now, any questions so far? Whatever I've shown, I know it has been so simple, but whatever I've also mentioned in my briefing, a little bit on uh, the lecture just now, is it okay? Can I ignore one line? What do you mean by ignore one line? You are talking about a uh, remark, correct? So you're talking about comments, commenting that. So, okay, now commenting index formula, of course you can do that, all right? No problem. Now, uh, the DAX variables and comments, right, okay, it's actually one of the integral part, okay, of DAX as well. So it's just like any programming, all right? To do a commenting, right, okay, you can somehow rather do something as in you use a, uh, hang on, you can actually go and highlight let me just uh, check out something. There is actually a simpler way. I cannot uh, remember, but usually the simple way to comment is to slash, okay, slashes. Hang on. Let's see if I put it into multiple lines again. I, there's actually a much better way to do that. Let, I, I cannot remember that the key, but for example, if I want to ignore double slash, okay, commenting. So this is exactly because DAX here, okay, we use something like uh this is exactly something like a C language, C sharp, right? Double slash. Okay. Okay, so you are most welcome, right? So double slash is the way to uh comment. And those of you who don't know what is this, you see, the moment I put a double slash, right, it turns green. This means this line will be ignored. It's considered a remark. So I can put here also, okay. Uh this is a remark or comment line. See, I can type anything there. It doesn't make sense also, but as long as the green is in the same line, so it's considered a remark. Okay. So sometimes it's good also okay, that you put in some comments in there to help you understand or maybe for documentation purposes. Okay. So yeah, um, that's a very good one. Okay. So hash is also in Ruby. Hash is also okay, a very prominent way of doing remarking, but in uh, DAX, it will be two forward slash. Okay. okay, great. That's a good question there. Let me just erase this. Now, since you already know bars and this and that, right? I want to give you guys a practice. Okay, I want to give you guys a practice. Shall we go and look at this particular existing measure? Let me just ignore this, delete this one off. I want you guys to go, maybe go into the sales table. Let me delete this hello var. I don't need this hello var anymore. Delete. Delete from model. Yes. Can you open up the revenue YOY percentage? Look at this. This is what I mean. Okay. Now, even if I were to shrink down the size of my font, you can see it is written in one super long line and they automatically would wrap down to here. They continue also to the next line. And you can see next line, they don't have a number. So which means there's no numbering for any lines that was continued from the first line. The second line, no number, you can see that. There's no number two. You only get line number two if you press shift enter yourself. Any line that was continued from the previous line, they are smart enough not to generate a new number. Okay. Now, your mission using your understanding of VAR, I want you to do this refactoring of code here. I want you guys to not rewrite this. Eh? The formula is correct, you know. I want you to uh, uh, understand based on your understanding of the usage of VAR and return, how are you going to rewrite this 
to make it easier to read. Okay, look at that. They are they are using divide function. Index, there's a divide function, yeah? Again, does not exist in Excel. Excel don't have a divide function, right? So divide revenue. Revenue is already, you know, another measure. Minus you calculate, you see, the, the first hand look at calculate function. They calculate again the revenue. Same period last year, using the date, then calculate revenue, same period last year, date. Wow, it is repeated. Okay. I'm going to explain to you this uh, after this, right? But can you think of how do you calculate this? Okay, there's another question. Can DEX calculate integer with whole number? Integer is whole number. Whole number is integer. Decimal is the one that is not whole number, right? Different format of number integer versus decimal. Um, okay. Now, the format of numbers, right? It's rather handle on the toolbar. You can see, depending on the type of your uh, uh, data, you can choose a format here. As long as it's a number, right? Or it's a decimal, depending on your data type. A particular column, let's say, for example, this column, order quantity, I select a column. You see, data type is whole number. So the format, it can be whole number, it can be whatever, you see? So, oh, sorry. If you change the data type to something else, then there will be a different format. For example, date and time will be a different format. But of course, there is actually a format function index. But the problem is the format function is only to format text. Okay? But you can use the format function also to format numbers. Yes, you can. Right? The format function, format a column name or a measure name. Then comma, you type your format. For example, if it's a number, I can format it, right, to display in currency. Right? Let's see whether I can show the example. While you guys are still doing that, I purposely create a new measure. Ah, oh, gosh. Why is it that the customer is always selected? Sales is selected. A new measure in sales. Let's call it testing. Okay. Format function. You can see you can format a number to a specific value. So it says, if I say, let's say format 10, comma, to a format. So the format I can put in, let's say, uh, dollar hash, comma, hash, 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 like this. It's okay. So when I run this, and I drag the testing and I put it into a, this, you can see that. All right. So the measure is to format the value of 10 using this format. So it's showing dollar sign. All right. And if I want to format 1000, and now it shows 1000 with a thousand separator. Okay. So you can, if you are talking about using DAX to perform changing the format of a number, that's how you do it. Okay. But if you're talking about modeling wise, data modeling on the table, the column, then you can use the toolbar to change the data type and change the format explicitly. So either use mouse click on the top format, this part, or in your formula, you use format function.